time with the restricted travel and uh, we hope that we still can meet in the air and they can transfer the message and uh, especially with the knowledge transfer and networking by the air and uh, while by the DG networking. And uh, yeah, kindly we can ask our colleague to uh, our audience, can you uh, please kindly to open your video at the beginning? And I think a few minutes later, we can uh, turn switch off the video and uh, we can go uh, uh, on with our uh, message, especially thanks to the Stefan Pipka. He will introduce his farm in Germany. And actually he took this video a few days ago in his farm. As I know just now, uh, he just uh, sold uh, his poultry to the slaughtering house days ago, and now he's waiting for his new chicks. And thank you very much to share your uh, farm situation. Although we cannot travel to Germany now to see your farm, but uh, we are happy to to we are happy to uh, see your farm. Hope very soon we can visit Hanover and uh, have chance to visit your farm by uh, by personal base. And uh, is everybody able to open the video? Or otherwise, that uh, yes, please go ahead. And uh, we we kind of ask our all the audience because I think people are. Uh, getting in one by one slowly, and uh, yeah. So, uh, 那我再用中文说一下哈。呃，早上好，下午好，或者晚上好。因为今天我们的观众来自全全世界二十五个国家的注册观众，所以在这里呢，热情的欢迎大家来到这个汉诺威畜牧展，也是中国国际化集约展的全球家禽高峰论坛。呃，在这个特殊的时期呢，我们很高兴在这个平台上与大家交流。呃。在这里邀请大家将您的这个视频打开，我们将在这个前期的短期的几分钟，让我们的发言人看到您是谁。因为根据我们上一场的经验，呃，发言人会感到更加的这个兴奋与这个现场感，来跟我们的观众进行交流。今天我们的这个注册观众来自二十五个国家，包括呃德国、荷兰、美国、马来西亚、泰国。印度、呃，土耳其、伊朗、墨西哥、荷兰，呃，西班牙、英国、加拿大、波兰等二十五个国家。所以呢，在此呢，非常高兴我们的各位观众能打开您的摄像头。So, uh, today I brief you that our visit audience registration audience came from Germany, uh, Netherlands, uh, Canadian, uh, Canada, America. Iran, uh, Netherlands, India, Thailand, Turkey, Australia, Austria, and uh, Russia, Spanish, uh, Spain, and Belgium, uh, Italy, Iran, and about 25 countries. So we kindly ask, uh, uh, warmly welcome you here. So first of all, I would like to invite the welcome speech from uh, the organizer of also from my uh, director from uh, Frankfurt, Mr. Koch. And Mr. Bangkok is the Director General of the Age International. So Mr. Koch, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ms. Lili. Good morning, good day, or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My very warm welcome from on behalf of the German Agricultural Society from Germany. And uh, I wish a pleasant day with our today's Global Poultry Summit and webinar. Thank you, Lili. Uh, first, I want to ask you a question. Good morning or good afternoon. I'm from Germany, the representative of the German Agricultural Society. I want to ask you a warm welcome. I also hope that you can enjoy the global poultry summit and have a happy holiday. As introduced by Ms. Lili, I'm Bernd Koch, I'm Managing Director of DLG International. And because of our subsidiary DLG Agrotech service with Managing Director Lili and her team, I am three or four times a year in China, but unfortunately in 2020, so far I wasn't there and it's not necessary to explain why, unfortunately. 
嗯、呃，刚才这个张丽女士已经介绍过，我是德国农协海外事业部的总监，呃 b u r n Cock。那呃，这个德国农协在中国的这个分支机构呢，是由张丽女士来打理的。我本人也会每年到中国三到四次来指导业务，但是呢，二零二零年以来我还没有到访过中国，这个原因也就无需细说了，大家都知道。Two weeks ago, we were running our first Sino-European Pig Summit webinar, and it was very successfully with more than 150 attendees out of 26 countries. 两周之前，我们在线上组织了中欧猪业论坛，相当的成功。呃，这个论坛也吸引了来自二十多个国家的一百五十多名参会者。From today, exactly in two weeks, on Monday, June eighth, we will hold the Global Dairy Summit webinar. 呃，从今天起呢，再往后推两个星期，六月八号的时候，我们还会再办一次线上的全球奶业论坛。We invited very interesting speaker. First is、um, Called Lili on behalf of DRG, he is a big dairy farmer in Lower Saxony in Germany, and he is famous because of his perfect management system in dairy. 呃，张丽女士代表德国农协呢，邀请了一位非常呃非常这个有意思的发言人。他是德国一个很大的这个啊奶牛场主，而且呢享有盛名，原因就是他对奶牛场的管理是相当完美的。Another very well-known speaker is Dr. Sven Gruppe. He was part of the Sino-German project for animal production for many years in China, and for this reason, he has a big experience and he is knowing China pretty well. 另外一一位呃著名的这个发言人呢是 Swan 呃 Gopper， 他本人曾经多年参与中德畜牧项目，所以呢有非常丰富的经验，而且也非常了解中国的国情。Another speaker is coming from Denmark. It's Snorri Sigurdsson. He is head of China Denmark Milk Technology Center. As a joint venture between the dairy companies Ala and Mengyu, sorry for this pronunciation, in China, this center has a main goal to improve milk production in China on all levels within milk quality, animal welfare, environmental aspects, and efficiency. 呃，另外一名发言人，他是这个动物产业负责人。这个新一个做的，包括不是著名企业，他们发方方面就是要增通的，有那那些高牛市场，注重环保以及节省效率的问题。Since sustainable agricultural production for professional providing with safe food for human nutrition. Is more and more focused by consumers, and farmers are more and more asked for more transparency regarding their production. We, as organizer, are hoping to meet a point of highest interest with our webinars. Ah,刚才那个可能翻译的这个效果有点呃网络。刚才那个我们靠同事提到呢，因为这个呃呃，我们也非常高兴通过这个网络时代呢，让我们通过线上也可以完成我们很多的这个信息的交流。Uh, Ms. Lily, your Chinese is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> For today's Global Poultry Summit webinar, I wish much success, combined with my hope that our participants will gather helpful information, and I'm convinced that our speakers will spread helpful news. 
。那么我们希我们希望呢，呃，通过我们的发言人也会跟我们的这个观众带来很好的互动，也希望我们尽快能听到这个行业发展的好消息。And last but not least, I hope to meeting all of you face to face with good health in September in Chengdu, where we will run our oil route here, China. I wish a pleasant day. 嗯，非常高兴，我们希望很快呢能够在中国见到你，尤其在九月份的这个汉诺威中国的展会上。呃、uh, ，Mr. Koch, I also miss you very much. I didn't see you this year. I hope we can meet、uh, very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. 啊、uh, ，非常感谢。呃，康老同志说，呃，呃，感谢我们这个德国农业协会国际总监呃，康康伯德先生的这个致辞。接下来呢，我们有请的是我们第一位发言人。刚才大家也也看到了，就是我们在开篇的时候的这个农场，就是来自 Stephen Tipke。Stephen Tipke 呢，他同时是这个德国呃呃白羽肉鸡农场主这个肉养殖协会的主席。但另外呢，他的真他的身份是。Uh, so now we would like to invite Stefan Tipka. He's a farmer, he's a poultry farm, and, and uh, also he's a chairman of the German Brother Farmer. Mr. Tipka, please. It's your turn. Yeah, thank you. Um, good morning or hello to everybody. Um, my, my topic is biosecurity at farm level, and uh, we will talk about biosecurity outside uh, the stables and um, yeah let let us see 感谢大家上午好现在可以听到吗 感谢大家上午好今天呢我将会以农场生物安全为主题来做报告来讲一下这个动物蓄射之外的生物安全问题 next page please Thank you. Uh, so my name is Stefan Tipka. I'm 39 years old, uh, married, four children. Um, I learned farming. Uh, I did not study because uh, I've got our family farm from my father very early. He died as I was uh, 14 years old. So I start farming over 20 years ago. And today I am chair, also chairman of German Broiler Farmers Organization. So uh, on this uh, page, you can uh, see on the white side a red cross. Uh, that is where our family farm, which you can see on the left picture, um, is located. Uh, we are located. Uh, very near to the border of the Netherlands. It's only 40 kilometers uh, in the northwest. Uh, our regional state is Lower Saxony, the same regional state as Hanover. Uh, Hanover is the capital of Lower Saxony, where also dear GEO tier uh, is. 啊，你可以看到呢，我的农场呢，位于这个呃德国和荷兰的边境，在萨下萨克森州，也是这个德国农业协会著名的汉诺威畜牧展的这个呃呃呃省会之地，汉诺威呃也就在萨克森州。我们
uh, we have 440,000 broiler places, what means 3.2 million broilers per year. Uh, we have about 600 hectare arable land. Uh, the most uh, 570 hectares are rented from other farmers. And uh, we have also energy production. We have at the moment two biogas plants. Each biogas plant has a capacity of 570 kV. And we have solar panels with 1,800 kV power. Uh, Stephen and Beckley kind of, he's a full-time farmer. He's going to show us the meat. The meat is his part. In addition, he has a cow. He has a cow. He has a thousand head of cow. He has a thousand head of cow. He has a thousand head of cow. And besides, because he has a cow, he has a cow. He has a cow. He has a cow. 灰农业，所以呢，它这个饲料的种植六百多公顷的这个呃可耕地。另外的，关于这个分屋还田的方面呢，这个 Stephen 还拥有两个沼气厂，每个沼气厂的这个发电量能达到五百七十五百七十千瓦。Yeah, next page. Uh, so that is our chicken business. Uh, as you can see. Um, we have three places uh, in the middle. The middle picture is where we started. Uh, we started with boilers in the year 2009 and built up this new farm, eight houses, uh, each house with 1,800 square meters. And uh, because we talk about that later, you can see around uh, this unit, uh, a wall, a fence, uh, we build it or uh, plant trees. So you have an optical border and uh, inside we have a fence, but we will talk about that later. Um, first set. Uh, Dadao 呃，然后呢，我们在这个图上也可以看到，呃，这个养殖场的外面呢是有这个墙和围栏，而且还种植了不少的树。呃，另外在养殖场内部其实也是有一些围栏的。之后我们再继续说这个问题。The big, uh, sorry, one back, please. Uh, on the white side, you see a picture. It's a the next farm we buy, uh, we buy it in 2011. It's an old, we call it Louisiana uh, stable. Uh, we renewed everything. Today we use this unit as a trial, trial farm. We divided uh, the house into two halves and we can feed different types or, or different feeds on the left or on the right side. We can add uh, different uh, things into the water. So we are, we are doing a lot of tests for us. Uh, we can uh, test two different types of genetics and all this stuff. 在右边这张图上呢,大家可以看到的这个农场呢,是我们2011年买过来的。这个它要老一些,我们把它叫做路易斯安娜蓄舍。我们把这个地方用作试验农场，而且内部呢分成了两半，用于试验不同的饲料，在水里面加不同的东西。在这个养殖场，我们做很多的测试，也采用两种不同的这个遗传材料。And the picture on the left, uh, you see a farm with four houses, each house with 1,350 square meters. Uh, we buy that farm in 2013. Uh, the farmer retired, and so he asked us uh, if we want to buy that farm. Uh, we did also a lot of repairings and renewed a lot of things. And so today uh, we have uh, this farm all in, all out, at the same time with the farm on the right side. 
so we can uh, look on the res results and compare. And the other farm in the middle, it's also all in or out. Yes, yeah, Stefan, you can go on the next page, please. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So um, some information about how we working. Uh, we are working in an integration. Uh, at the moment, we are working with integration. Uh, the name is a woodcutter. It's also one of the bigger integrations in Germany. Uh, and that means at the moment, we have to buy the day or chicks from woodcutter hatchery. The hatchery it's uh, 50 minutes uh, away, so the, the chicks have not a long distance to go. Uh, we have to buy the feed from Rotkutter Feed Mill, and we have to sell our chicken to Rotkutter Slaughterhouses. Uh, means uh, Rotkutter has at the moment two slaughterhouses in uh, Germany. Maybe first mm. introduce and then, then I go on. Yeah,就是说在这里德国呢,呃,他们这个Stephen的,呃,养鸡场是跟这种集成服务的,他是通过这样一个叫,呃,Rotter,呃,Rotter的这个,呃,一种公司呢,来购买雏鸡,然后
Um, it, it seems very simple, but I think it's one important thing. It's fan thing, and you you see it uh, on the pictures from our farm. We have sometimes we have uh, two fences. Uh, one fence around uh, our farms. Uh, it's more an optical border so that people can see stop here. Uh, it's not an official area. And fencing it always means limit people and limit vehicle traffic. Um, and you can make sure that everybody sees you are working with a, we call the black and white areas and that not everybody can go into the farm. 呃，关于这个，大家可以看到，在生物防控呢，我们认为这种物理的防控是第一道防线。我们我们的农场呢有两道防线，大家可以看到上架这两道门，呃，也就是说这种门呢对车流、物流、人流呢都是有一定的限制，也就是每个人都非常的清楚什么是白色区域和黑色区域是可能去和不能去的，这是非常重要的。And we are working with uh, one one back please, and we are working also with uh, automatically. Uh, doors, uh, so the door is always closed and uh, the food, uh, the feed truck drivers have her own keys or we also have an app, so if there's somebody who wants to go inside, he can call us and we can open the doors with an app, so everybody can go inside and we know exactly who goes inside, um, so we don't, we don't have uh, uncontrolled traffic in our farms. Uh,在这个大家可以看到，进到机场内部之后呢，我们就看到我们有另外一道门。这道门呢，呃，任何车辆是都是不能进入的。呃，如果有人来的时候呢，我们的相关人等都在手机上都有一个APP的软件，它可以在手机上向我们要求，只有授权的人呢才能够通过手机的这个控制打开门，才能够进去所有这个车辆。所以我们对人流的限制呢是非
black area from the farm. We have a cooling system for the dead birds. And on the other side, you see a door, uh, which our contractor who uh, picks the dead birds every week up uh, can go in here from outside the farm. So we always think uh, that the contractor who picks up a lot of dead birds on a big number of farms uh, is a big risk for us uh, because he has a lot of diseases uh, on his truck. So be careful with him and make sure that this contractor don't has to go on your farm area. Uh, 它有特殊的通道来处理病死机因为在病死机的这个处理上呢斯蒂芬是跟这个合同商来签约的但是大家知道就是他想知道这合同商他不光是在一家来收集病死机他会去这个各各个工厂都会去收所以呢他的这个携
they get everything from us. So they have before work is starting, they have to have a shower. Then they have their own box, and so we can make sure that they don't bring diseases inside our farm. 因为每天呢，在我们的农场也有这个外来的员工，尤其在这个我们的呃育种的这个机场，所以呢，每个员工，因为他还可能会在别的呃农场有过这个兼职工作，所以每一个员工来到这个外勤员工来到我们农场的时候，都会换，都会收到这样一个白盒子，这个白盒子里就有他淋浴的，从内衣、外衣、裤子、鞋子。一切的这个呃一套新的经过消毒的一套装备，它必须呃清洗更换之后才能进入我的机场。Um, it's also bedding or litter. I don't know the right English word.、Uh, it's also important、um, that that material is、uh, storage bird free, no mice, no rats, because otherwise, if you prepare your Your houses, you make disinfection, you heat it up, and you make everything very perfect. And、uh, your bedding or your litter material is not、uh, free from diseases.、Um, yeah, you start with a problem. So make sure invest a little bit money、uh, that your storage is really really perfect. 嗯，在这里呢，我们的这个饲料存存储的这个呃仓库也是非常的重要，要进行严格的清洗，尤其要严禁这个鸟类和各种鼠类的进入和这个打洞啊，呃繁殖。这个呢，我们有严格的每日的消毒。So and、uh, now at the end,、um, two examples、um, how you can maybe old containers.、Um, Or build up new hygiene hygiene areas.、Uh, we had that problem because we buy two old farms.、Uh, that farms at that time had no fencing,、uh, no areas or rooms where also your workers can make a break or where they can have a shower, where can, they can change clothes. So.、Um, It, it was really hard to buy two old containers. You can see on the pictures one and another container. We build up a new a new roof, and so you can use it for. You see in the picture here、uh, the gumboots, the boots, and also a little bit litter material. And you have on the right side the room where they can make a short break. And on the left side, you have、uh, restrooms and the shower and all these things. 嗯，这是一个典型的范例。我们他做的这个特殊的一个卫生防御区。呃，在呃几年前呢，那个 Stephen 新购买了一个机场，但是这个机场呢因为比较老旧，它没有这个防御系统，甚至员工在这个休息呃呃淋浴更衣的地方都没有。所以呢。呃，他在这个地方买了两个，他做了两个集装箱。这两个集装箱呢，分区作为淋浴区、休息区，然后这个餐饮区。呃，然后在这个这两个集装箱呢，实现了他的一个卫生防御系统。Yeah, and that is the second example. Also, one and the second container in a new roof in the middle,、uh, a new door, and you see again、uh, gumbles boots. And、uh, storage for a little bit bedding,、uh, high-pressure water cleaning machine. And what I want to say is,、uh, or the message is, make really good working conditions for your people.、Uh, that is the first thing if you want to work with a high biosecurity level. If every if the conditions are not good, nobody. Uh, has fun to work in such a system, so and it's quite it's really easy to to build it up also on an old farm、um, and to get on a higher level、uh, in biosecurity. 呃，可以看到这张图片呢，就是两个集装箱的内部的陈设，它在这个物件的摆放，呃，包括这个休息室、办公区的呃这样的一个陈列。呃、uh, ，那 Stephen 想表达的一个想法是，我们如果要
，如果要维护一个机场的高的生物防控，呃，那么我们的要给员工创造一个舒适的环境非常重要。任何人只有在一个舒适的环境下，才能够提高他的责任感，这样才能是这种责任感是我们保持生物安全防控的第一道防线。Yeah, thank you for listening. And、uh, if you have questions, please. 好的，呃，那么在今天的这个环节呢，我们呃我们会请这个观众，如果您有问题，可以随时提出 ，Stephen 可以现场解答。然后在每一个这个发言之后呢，您都可以、呃、可以提问。我们有两个问题的这个呃时间可以给到大家来提问。如果没有问题的话呢，我们可以我们将会走向下一个问题。呃，如果您有问题，您可以这个举手。大家有问题吗？ Yeah. So now, do you have any question? We can have two questions to uh for for each presentation, or you can leave to the to the end of the discussion. But you are welcome to have the uh question right after each presentation. If there are any any questions, you can raise your hand, and we can see see your hands raise up. Okay, actually, um, I have a question to Stefan. Uh, we want to know that, uh, especially during the the pandemic time, and uh, China, we have a、uh, uh, challenging on the uh, sub, especially on the food supply, feed supply to the poultry, and also connection to the slaughtering house. That's、uh, how is the situation in your farm, or how is the general situation in German poultry farms from the feeding supply, any shortage or any breakdown of the supply chain, and、uh, also any problem to connection to the slaughtering house.、Um, good question.、Uh, so at the moment we had no problems with that. So I think it's important to say、uh, we are working and living in an area with a high livestock intensity. That means a lot of pigs and also boilers and layers and all these things.、Uh, I think Northwest Germany and Netherlands、uh, are famous for this high stock intensity.、It、means that we also have a lot of slaughter houses, a lot of feed mills, and a lot of People who are working in that business, and also the government of the local state knows exactly how important this、uh, business is for our area. So、um, everybody uh, worked uh, for that. Everything is running on, so everything works really, really good. And、uh, I think it was a little bit more work for everybody. Because they have to divide it, the shifts into two halves, and there were no contacts between the working people. And the same was on our farm. We also、uh, divided everything a little bit more than before, so no contact in our office.、Um, the people who are working with boilers only focus on boilers. No contact to people who are working with the pots or with the pigs. But everything was going on really, really good. Okay, uh, Stephen 说呢，因为他在这在这个德国的西北部是养殖业的非常密度的高密度区，呃，然后呢，也是对德国的整体的畜牧有重大的发展，所以在这个疫情期间呢，呃，他们也是采取了非常严格的呃这个。人工人和其他的这个隔离以及等这措施，所以整体来看呢，德国目前它的工厂的呃呃没有什么影响。对，这是它的这个主要的一个呃回答。呃、uh, ，so 呃、uh, 呃 ，also the how about the link to the slaughtering house? Slaughterhouse is、uh, is any slaughtering house closed which affect your uh your next uh, step? Uh, no, uh, there was no. Slaughterhouse for boilers who was closed.、Uh, we had、uh, one slaughterhouse for pigs,、uh, which was closed for for one week, I think. And we have also one smaller cattle、uh, slaughterhouse, which was closed, but that's it. 
。哦、oh, ，That's good news。啊、uh, ，Stephen 说到呢，我提到就是他这个屠宰场有没有受到影响？他讲到就是在德国整个在呃他周围的这个家禽的这个屠宰场都没有受到任何的影响，只有一个这个养猪场的呃猪的屠宰场呢停了一周，但都很快的恢复了工作。So in generally, it's uh, uh it's still working very well. Very good to hear. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much for uh, the, our experience, our practical experience from a German farm practice, which is from biosecurity, because as you know, this is really a question in China about the uh, next biosecurity measurement. Thank you for uh, sharing the experience. And so now we continue to go to the uh, another level. So now we have practical, uh, we go to the theoretical uh, uh, experience and we would like to invite our next speaker dr guna dr guna is a uh, from heidemark uh, he's a uh, he's a chief veterinarian at the heidemark company uh, heidemark is a turkey the famous turkey producer in germany and uh, dr guna was also the uh, veterinarian at bavarian and consultant for the bavarian uh, department of poultry extension 接下来呢，我们从这个呃德国这个农场主的经验呢，我们走向呃德国的这个兽医，看他们对这个整个的，尤其是对这个抗生素在德国的使用。因为我们的机场呢，也是进马上要进入这个无抗呃饲料无抗的时代。但是抗生素在目前这十几年来，在德国到底是怎么应用的？我们来有请到这个德国原呃巴伐利亚州的家禽兽医官。目前也是德国著名的火鸡生产商 Heidemark 公司的首席兽医师。So, Mr. Dr. Guna, and warmly welcome to share your experience. Thank you very much, Lily. A warm welcome from my side to anybody who is participating in today's webinar. So, good morning to everybody here in Europe, good afternoon to anybody in China and Asia, and uh, probably good night or uh, to anybody in Australia. Um, the topic I'm going to share with you today oh, is so antibiotic hard. reduction and poultry production. And uh, this is not only theoretical, this is oh, as well practical experience because we have been producing um, without in-feed antibiotics for the last 20 years. So I would like to give you a brief overview on the latest developments with regard to antibiotic usage and resistance worldwide in the EU and in Germany. And then I would like to focus on some key aspects which we find to be crucial for successful cruelty production without or with only a rare usage of antibiotics. 感谢丽的介绍。那么，对所有参会者呢表示欢迎，向欧洲的参会者说一声上午好，向中国、亚洲，呃，甚至还有澳大利亚的参会者表示下午好。那么，呃，我们在过去二十年呢，一直都没有在生产中再添加抗生素了，呃，在这方面经验比较丰富。接下来我会介绍一下全球、欧洲以及德国在无抗减抗生产方面的。一个情况之后呢，会介绍一下在这个禽类呃禽肉生产方面取得成功的一些关键要素是什么？呃，如何在呃这个不用或者是少用抗生素的情况下实现呃实现这个商业的成功？ Antibiotic resistance is actually not really a new message. It's a strategy by bacteria to survive. Uh, in nature against other um, organisms like fungi. Actually,抗生素耐药性并不是一个新的话题了。它其实对于细菌来说只是一个自然的过程。那么细菌要和其他的生物,比如说这个真菌进行竞争,进而存活下来。the problem comes actually with the increased use of antibiotics, which led to increased resistance in bacteria. And that's not only the case in animals, but in humans as well. Now, 
也不断的增强，并且这个问题不仅是在动物养殖中存在，在人类中也普遍存在。To create awareness of the problem and, and to combat the, this problem, the WHO released a new classification of antibiotics. Um, it's called the AVARI classification, which includes now three groups of antibiotics, uh, which are categorized according to their uh, ability to induce and to spread resistance. 为了呃这个提高人们对于抗生素耐药性问题的认识，并且进一步解决这个问题。世卫组织对抗生素进行了新的分类，这个分类呢叫做 AVARI， 它按照这个呃抗生素产生并且抑制耐药性的能力，将它分为三组。This actually is a database which had been launched in、um, October last year, and、uh, it's intended to be used as an interactive tool. For the countries to better support antibiotic monitoring and optimal use. 嗯，其实呢，这个是一个数据库，它是一九年十月份正式上线的。它的宗旨是，呃，作为一个互动性的工具，来支持各国对抗生素使用的监测，并且实现抗生素的这个呃最优化的使用。Next slide, please. 下一张幻灯。If we have a look at the European situation and the German situation,、uh, you will realize that we have an almost 25-year、uh, experience of production with、uh, limited or no antibiotics in feed. 我们看一下这个欧洲和德国的情况，就会发现基本上。呃，我们已经有将近二十五年的时间在生产中是限制或者是不使用抗生素的。As you may say, the earliest ban was of furacolidone, an antibiotic, in 1995, followed by、uh, a ban on animal protein in in the poultry diet due to BSE、uh, in the early 2001s, and in connection with this. There was a voluntary abandonment of in-feed、um, antibiotics since the early 2000s,、uh, and that was an official ban in 2006. 呃，从九五年开始呢，我们就禁止使用氟南唑酮及呃做这个治疗的目的了。而且从零一年初疯牛病，由于疯牛病的原因呢，也禁止在禽类日粮中使用动物蛋白。呃，这个因此到二十一世纪初，养殖户呢也自愿放弃在饲料中使用抗生素。到二零零六年的时候，这是正式出台了官方的禁令。With the ban of nifazole, which is、uh, a very important drug to control blackhead disease in 2003, we ended up with no antibiotics left in feed, or、uh, and due to the fact that animal protein was banned as well, we feed more or less vegetarian diets to all poultry since then. 呃，由于这个零三年呢，我们是出台了对于呃消氟唑尔的禁令。那么这个消氟唑尔是其实是一个非常重要的呃治疗黑头病的一个呃一个这个兽药。呃，零三年出台禁令之后呢，我们就完全不在饲料中使用抗生素了。那由于之前也禁止在饲料中使用动物蛋白，所以我们现在在饲料中就是添加植物植物蛋白。Since、uh, 2014, we have a national monitoring of antibiotic usage and animal production, which means that any antibiotic which is prescribed to an animal intended for human consumption has to be registered in a national national database、uh, for further monitoring. 呃，一四年的时候呢，我们开始对动物生产中的抗生素使用情况进行国家监测。这个具体是指的什么呢？它就是说，呃，任何用于人类消费的这个
呃动物，它在饲养中呃所开具的这个抗生素呢，都必须要到呃数据库中进行注册才行。You need to know that therapeutic use is only after veterinary consultation and written prescription by the veterinarian that only antibiotics which are licensed for use in animals intended for human consumption can be used and that there's no prophylactic use of antibiotics in animals intended for human consumption. 那这里呢有三点需要注意。首先就是，呃，用作治疗的抗生素呢，呃，它使用的前提应该是咨询兽医，并且拿到兽医的这个呃嗯书面的处方。第二个注意的点呢，就是呃，食用动物呃所使用的抗生素呢，只能是那些呃经过注册的许可的。第三点就是不允许采用预防性的预防性的采用抗生素。So you may realize that the usage of antibiotics is very restricted here in Europe and very much controlled. So you can see that in the European countries, antibiotic use is very strict and controlled. This slide gives you uh, an information about the latest categorization within the European Union. This uh, categorization is from February last year, and it slightly differs uh, from what the WHO released in October. But at the end, it actually goes in the same direction. 在这张幻灯片上，大家可以看到欧盟对抗生素的一个新的分类。这是二零一九年二月份发布的，它和世卫组织之前十月份发布的那一版呢有呃些微的不同，但是最后它们的方向是一致的。Again, the categorization is according to their ability to induce or to spread resistance. And having this in mind, we have the category A. Including all antibiotics licensed for humans only. 呃，这里要再次强调，分类的依据呢，就是呃，抗生素诱导或者是传播耐药性的能力。呃，我们可以看到，这个 A 类是仅限于仅用于人类的这个抗生素。These antibiotics or these antibiotic classes are not allowed by any chance for use in animals intended for human cons uh, for human consumption. 而这一类别的抗生素是绝对不允许在食用动物身上使用的。All the other antibiotic classes can be used, but should be used according to this categorization, meaning restricted or with caution or with prudence, but are available to、uh, veterinarians in poultry production. Next slide, please. 那么，呃，接下来的三类 B、C、D 呢，指的是，呃，兽医可以使用，但必须严格按照这些分类，也就是限制、注意和谨慎的这个类别来进行使用的。This slide is actually included to illustrate the complexity in decision making with regard to the use of antibiotics in animals. 这张图呢，其实解释了，呃，这个动物在动物身上使用抗生素决策的复杂性。You say if a veterinarian wants to prescribe uh, uh, an antibiotic, he does not has only to deal with the disease the animal is affected from, but as well with the economic factors, with public health concerns. With animal welfare and all the other aspects which are illustrated here in this chart. 如果一名兽医要开出这个开具抗生素的处方的话，他其实不仅需要考虑呃治愈动物所感染的这个疫病，同时还需要考虑经济因素，比如说呃公共卫生，呃还有这个动物福利，以及这张图上所列出的其他一些因素。If you are interested in、uh, more information on that, 
please go to the Apruma website. Apruma is a European platform for the responsible use of medicines and animals, which is available uh, in the internet. Next slide, please. 如果大家对这方面感兴趣，想获取更多信息呢，可以访问这个 Ipruma， 就右下角的 Ipruma 的网站。它呃是这个呃受用药物负责任使用的一个网络平台。With the following slides, I would like to focus on a few aspects,、uh, which we find are very crucial for successful project production. We do know that there are A number of factors which are related to、uh, animal usage. These are these go back to the animals, to husbandry, to management, and to diseases. What do I mean with that? 那么在这张幻灯片上，我将介绍一下决定呃禽肉生产成功的一些重要因素。嗯、呃，它们主要包括。和动物相关的，和这个畜牧养殖相关的，还有和管理和疫病相关的。那么，它们具体指的是什么呢 ？When we look at animal-related factors, we do not only think about type of animal or genetic line. We do think of pulled quality as poultry producers in general, because pulled quality is crucial for a good start. Especially in broilers, but in turkeys and、uh, ducks as well. So, if you want to produce successfully without antibiotics, you need good poles. 呃，首先我们看第一个因素，就是动物相关的因素。呃，我们知道，其实动物相关这个因素呢，不仅仅指的是说这个遗传材料如何，呃，雏鸡它的质量呢，对于一个良好的开端是非常重要的。呃，这方面呢，在肉鸡的养殖，在火鸡等等呃养殖中都可见一斑。如果说呃要呃不采用抗生素进行禽肉生产的话，必须要有质量优良的雏鸡。When you face a ban of、uh, in-feed antibiotics in your country, as in China, you need to think about to change probably the, your housing conditions, the type of equipment you have, the feeding you do, yeah, how to achieve good climatic conditions in your barn, which means you probably face a lot of investments. You have to do in order to be successfully in this、uh, strategic change. 那如果说中国要禁止在饲料中使用抗生素的话，我们养殖户就需要做出相当多的呃变动来适应这个呃禁令，比如说这个鸡舍的条件。使用的设备的类型、饲料，呃，以及这个呃鸡舍内通风啊等等各方面的条件，这就意味着需要做出很多的投资，这也是我们所必须做的。呃，这样呢才能通过这种战略性的改变，才能够适应新的环境。When it comes to management-related factors, stockmanship is one of the key aspects. You need to have Trained and skilled stockmen to watch your poultry, and as Stefan Tepka already mentioned, you need to create awareness of biosecurity on farm. This is absolutely important. 第二一点就是在这个养殖方面，我们需要有训练有素并且技能过关的呃养殖员来去看管鸡群。就像呃 Stephen 前面提到的，我们需要在工作人员中创立呃这个实现这种农场生物安全的意识。When it comes to diseases, we need to think about. Not only about our own poultry, but about the local disease situation. If you produced in a hotspot area, like our northwestern part of Germany, then you probably have to think about to、uh, improve your biosecurity、uh, to avoid the、uh, spreading of diseases onto your farm. 
you should think about prophylactic measures, you should create an animal health plan, or with other words, a vaccination plan to protect your poultry from certain diseases. And the last one is the disease-related factors. 呃，在这个方面呢，我们其实不仅仅要考虑呃我们自己的养殖场中的这个呃疫病的情况，同时还要考虑当地的一个疫情的情况。如果说我们处于一个热点地区，比如说在德国西北部，那就必须得考虑提升农场的生活安全等级，来避免一些疫情扩散到自己的这个机场，需要采取一些预防式的手段来制呃要制定这个动物卫生。方案要有这个接种的呃方案等等，来避免自己的这个鸡群受到影响。Next slide, please. No matter if you intend to go into poultry production or if you are already in the poultry production, you need to analyze the stage you are in. Is it breeders or is it commercials? And to uh, think about. Your way of production, your intended uh, location, where you want to set up your locations of production, where which partners will be your strategic partners, because you will probably not able to do everything on your own. You should think about structural requirements on farms, personal qualification requirements for your stockmen, yeah, and to, how to um, establish service procedures. 嗯、呃，如果说我们要进行这个禽肉的生产呢，需要呃分析多个方面的因素。首先呢，就是说，呃呃，这个你是进行哪一个环节的生产？是做呃这个父母带还是做商品带？然后呢，需要考虑自己的生产方式，想要选择啊、呃、什么样的地点。另外呢，就是需要找哪些战略伙伴，因为我们在实际的生产中呢，不可能说自己大包大揽做所有的事情。另外，需要考虑对于养殖场有哪些硬性的要求，对人员的资质有什么样的要求啊、呃？在这个呃服务，在这个实际的养殖工作中，还有什么相关的要求限制 ？So if you have made a proper analysis of your stage, you have to make strategic decisions. These will limit the scope for local decisions later on, but it will guarantee continuity and safety in production to a high degree for the future. 呃，我们对自己的这个生产阶段进行分析之后呢，就要做出一些呃基本的战略决策。它可能会限制我们本地决策的这个范围，但是将在很大程度上保证生产的连续性和安全性。Next slide, please. Only a few aspects which I find are very crucial. Water hygiene. In your water line, there will be a biofilm, no question what you're doing. It develops really fast and it's a wonderful reservoir for pathogens. It provides optimal conditions for growth and survival. And this biofilm protects bacteria from extremes in pH, disinfectants and antibiotics. 嗯、呃，接下来我来介绍一些呃具有决定性作用的因素。首先呢是这个水的卫生情况，我们在这个呃这个呃这个鸡饲喂的水中呢都会有这个生物膜，它的作用相当关键，可以隔绝病原体，并且为这个生长生存提供最佳的条件，并且使得细菌免受极端 pH 值、消毒剂和抗生素的侵害。The left picture illustrates a filter in your water line after antibiotic treatment. You always see something like this in most of the uh, drugs or uh, feed additives or water additives you're using. Um, but this is not the only uh, appearance how it can look like. The middle picture shows you another problem if you have high iron contents in your water if you're using groundwater your biofilm probably look like uh, this one in the middle and uh, you can imagine that not only bacteria but as well antibiotics will accumulate in such a biofilm or in such a slot and 
these low dose antibiotics will allow inducing resistance to the bacteria living in this biofilm and transferring the resistance from one bacterial species to another. Uh, 这张幻灯片上有三张图右边的这张图是一个过滤器是在进行了抗生素的相关处理之后所做的一个过滤器的样子通常人们可能会在这里面加一些添加剂等等的但是这不是它唯一的一种外观或者是形式中间这张图展示
。另外一个和其他需求同呃和其他方面同等重要的问题呢，就是，呃这个饲料颗粒的结构需求。这个指的是什么意思呢？如果我们把这个饲料，嗯、呃，研磨的过于细的话，就会导致细小颗粒过多。尽管它有利于消化吸收，但是可能会带来其他的问题，比如说侵蚀，所以结构需求也应该给予相当的重视才行。And finally, if you receive good feed, ensure that it is hygienically stored on farm, away from rodents and spillage with other things, and make sure you monitor your feed bins or silos on a regular basis and clean them if necessary. 嗯，那么如果说我们能够拿到这个，呃，我们首先拿到这个优质的饲料，呃，接着呢就要对它进行卫生状况良好的仓储储存，把它放在远离啮齿动物的地方，并且和其他的东西也要做一定的隔离。而且呢，我们还要定期的对呃它的这个饲料的情况进行监测，如果有必要还要进行清洁。Next slide, please. And finally, a few words on the veterinary aspects. Veterinary service should be an integrated part of your healthcare plan and should be done by contracted poultry specialists. 最后一个方面就是预防。我们在兽医服务方面呢，应该给予相当的重视，因为它是。呃，动物卫生方案不可或缺的一个部分，我们应该由呃签约的兽医专家来提供这样的服务。Veterinary service should include regular visits on farm, should include lab investigations according to approved rules and guidelines. So culturing of bacterial pathogens and resistance testings should be routine. Uh, on your farm. 那么这个兽医服务的内容是什么呢？第一就是要定期去农场做检查，第二个就是根据呃经过审批的一些规则和指南进行实验室调查，第三是对细菌病原体和耐药性进行啊、呃、这个定期的检测。Any treatment should be accompanied by a written veterinary prescription. To be able to uh, show uh, at external inspections what has been given to your birds and at what time. 呃、uh, ，那么在这个提供这种兽医服务的时候呢，我们必须要拿到呃这个处方，这样子我们才了解呃我们的鸡只是在什么时候啊、呃、用什么样的药物进行了治疗。And finally. Together with your veterinarian, you should develop a tailored vaccination program and management guidelines to uh, produce successfully. So the best would be if your veterinarian would be a specialist and a generalist at the same time. 那呃，如果说我们的这个兽医呢，他既是一个嗯。Um, 既是一个这个兽医专家，同时也是一个全科兽医、全科的医生，还有这个专科医生的话，那么，呃，我们就能够和他一起来共同制定一个农场的疫苗接种计划以及管理指南，这样呢，实现呃这个良好的生产。Next slide, please. To conclude my talk, I would like to state that the all poultry business. Has a granted license from the society to produce, so we should do it in a responsible and sustainable way. 嗯，接下来是总结部分。所有的这个家禽生产企业都是呃从社会那里获得生产许可的，因此我们要以负责任和可持续的方式进行生产。With regard to bacteria and antibiotics. Change your mind if you not already have done so, and have in mind that bacteria cannot be eliminated; they should be managed. So antibiotics, antibiotics should be used in a prudent way. In future, we will probably talk about antibi、uh, bacterial management or microbiome management, which means 
that you try to manage the bacteria which are in the guts of your poultry. Uh, 关于这个细菌和抗生素的，我们必须要记住，细菌是呃不是要要进行这个消除的，而是要对它进行管理。这就需要我们谨慎使用抗生素。未来呢，我们还会还会探讨这个菌群管理或者叫微生物群管理。
is not very likely helpful um, in that. Yeah, um, it will help to overcome a, a diarrhea, but not uh, an infectious disease. So, to uh, to be honest, the solution for your problem is biosecurity, biosecurity, and biosecurity again. Not introducing the the, the problem, not letting the the, the disease coming into your production. Um, Bajisan, she showed a ego one tea, uh, she won you AFP, the number two for John Soda, Hueda, she will put a cheating, uh, Bajisan, when he did a shisho, take a AFP, Zotana, take a shun and chumber, hung go, number two, which also so put a cheating AFP to the shisham, uh, shibu shi ASFP, just a few juan, number yeo can under the shi, take a G one. 这个确实是对所有的国家 Thank you very much. Is any other con uh, question? I think this question was very good and answer as well um, was can be referred to many farms on the use of uh, pro anti uh, probiotics. Yes. And uh, so uh, now if not many, any question we'd like to move on next uh, uh, session as uh, China poultry people, uh, I think globally is pay attention on the China meat supply. And uh, as all of you know, the, to ASF of pigs, Africa sun fever, China has a loss of 30% of um, uh, pork uh, uh, supply. And uh, at the same time, the poultry meat was, uh, it was increasing day by day and uh, by the consumer's uh, habits. And also many country was uh, uh, working on to exporting uh, poultry to uh, meat to China. And today we have invited uh, China Broiler Alliance the Secretary General, Mr. Huang, to introduce the current China poultry, uh, uh, the, the, bro the broiler industry uh, brief. And uh, next, we will enter the next phase. 大家现在非常关心这个因为这个猪瘟的影响下呢黄明如讲, uh, Mr. Huang is a, he will introduce the current uh, status, challenge, trend of China broaders industry. Yeah, he, he worked in this sector for uh, more than 20 years. Mm. Hamirja,呃，请讲，您听到我说话吗？不可以吗？那我们就先换，要不然先换下一个。Hamirja，你可以吗？呃，如果Hamirja是不是技术出了点问题，是不是？啊，那这样我们so uh, uh, um Mr. Sergey, uh, I think uh, uh, our Russian speaker um has a time pressure shall we switch to you 
Mm, hello, Lily. Okay, I'm ready. great. Okay, great. Let's uh, uh, let's uh, first put the uh, Russian uh, on the top, uh, Mr. Sergey, and uh, he's from the Russian uh, Poultry Union. Actually, he was also a uh, former time he was Russian Veterinarian Association's head, and today he is representing the Russian Poultry Union. We know that Russia is top five uh, poultry uh, producer in the world. And uh, we are very happy to hear the current situation and uh, also the uh, future plan of the industry. 那么接下来呢，我们先请上这个俄罗斯的生产者联盟的秘书长，俄罗斯家庭生产者联盟的几个秘书长的叫Sergey。呃，之前呢，他是在这个呃俄罗斯的授意联盟工作。那么最近呃
Next slide, please. Mm, so, uh, if uh, we will uh, look at the Russian poultry meat sector, so the uh, total production in uh, industrial air area uh, for the last uh, three years was uh, almost the same. Uh, we uh, started in uh, 2018 uh, a little bit less than uh, in, uh, 5 million tons. Uh, by the end of the last year, it was uh, a little bit more than uh, 5 million tons. Uh, I repeat that uh, the figures are in slaughter weight. And uh, the forecast uh, for this year is uh, 5.1 uh, million tons of, uh, of poultry meat in a slaughter weight. Uh, I repeat that in industrial sector. Uh, speaking about the balance of uh, export and import, uh, it is almost the same as well, uh, so it was uh, 222,000 tons in uh, 2018 and uh, the forecast for uh, this year is uh, uh, 230,000 tons. Um, half of uh, this uh, amount uh, comes from uh, Belarus, and as far as you know, we have a customs union of uh, five uh, countries, and it's uh, almost the same as the uh, European Union. And uh, there are no borders, there are no customs tariffs, so uh, uh, th that's about it. Uh, speaking about export, we are improving. We are improving uh, rapidly, I suppose. Uh, in uh, 2018, uh, the export uh, was about uh, 183,000 tons. By the end of the last year, uh, we uh, saw the uh, export of uh, 2010, uh, 210,000 tons. And uh, we consider that uh, by the end of this year, the export uh, will be no less than uh, 250,000 tons. Uh,我们在这张画面当片上来看一下俄罗斯的这个禽肉行业,呃,主要是这个工业生产方面。呃,这个首先看一下总的这个产量。我们看从18年到20年,这三年的情况基本上变动不是特别大。呃，一八年一呃一九年呢是稍稍超出了五百万吨，对二零二零年产量的一个预测呢，也是五百一十万吨。这里指的都是载铅活重。然后看一下进出口的平衡情况，二零二零年的进口呢，我们预计是二十三
Uh, on the right side of the slide, you can see the uh, top 25 of uh, Russian chicken uh, meat producers uh, by the end of uh, the 2019. Um, uh, on the left side, uh, the, um, the chart which uh, represents uh, the uh, distribution of the poultry production by the uh, federal districts of uh, Russian Federation. Uh,在这张幻灯片上，我们看到右边呢是列出了啊，二零一九年俄罗斯排名前二十五的禽肉生产企业，左边呢是俄罗斯这个禽肉生产的一个分布情况，是按照联邦管区来进行这个呃分类
the uh, main uh, importers of uh, Russian poultry meat uh, are the following countries. Uh, on the first place is uh, China, with the amount of uh, imports of uh, Russian poultry meat uh, about uh, 63,000 tons. Then uh, goes Ukraine uh, with amount of uh, 43,000 tons. Then goes Kazakhstan with amount of imports uh, um, about uh, 30,000 tons. Then goes Vietnam uh, with amount of uh, 21,000 tons. Then goes the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Then Kyrgyzstan, Armenia, Tajikistan, Azerbaijan, and United Arab Emirates. Uh, on the right, oh, I beg your pardon. 呃，那么这张画面上我们来看一下俄罗斯禽肉的主要进口国家，排在第一的呢是中国，进口量是六万三千吨，第二名是乌克兰，四万三千吨，第三名哈萨克斯坦将近三万吨，然后接下来呢是
we have uh, special standards and special uh, requirements for organic and animal uh, diseases uh, uh, free production uh, as well as we have very severe control for vaccines and uh, veterinary medicines uh, as far as you know, a couple of years ago, uh, there was uh, implemented a state strategy for AMR and now the regulators uh, in Russian Federation, um, they have a very strict approach in uh, uh, searching in uh, examination of uh, the samples of uh, the poultry products and uh, it's uh, it's forbidden to um, release uh, for the market uh, the products uh, with uh, for example antibiotics or in uh, any amount so now we have a zero, uh, zero tolerance uh, for microbiology and antibiotics in uh, final products. Uh,接下来介绍一下俄罗斯禽肉产品的竞争优势。首先呢，我们呃的饲料是无转基因的，在俄罗斯严禁种植呃转基因植。植物，那么我们的这个法律以及各方面的要求都是非常严格特殊的，严禁在饲料中使用转基因，并且也不允许在呃俄罗斯境内呢种植这个转基因的这个种子。呃，另外呢，我们对于无意生产也有特殊的标
for the supplying of poultry meat uh, to China. Uh, if you don't mind, I will uh, skip this slide. Uh,是因为时间有限呢,所以我就是,嗯,会介绍一下这个像中国供应禽肉的优势和风险,但是因为这个上面,呃,都,都讲了,所以这个有一些我要略过去,大家可以同意吗? Uh, uh, and I'd like to point uh, your attention on uh, some uh, aspects uh, regarding uh, Russian export to China, uh, which uh, we were witnesses uh, for uh, the last uh, two, three months regarding the uh, pandemic of uh, coronavirus. Uh, now you know that uh, the uh, significant share of Russian uh, export to China uh, be belong to uh, chicken uh, wings and uh, chicken paws. It's a gourmet uh, item uh, for the horeca segment and uh, for a processing segment as well. Uh, the prices are relatively uh, good for us, but uh, we faced uh, a lot of uh, difficulties, especially in January and February, uh, especially with the bank uh, segment, with uh, uh, log logistics, you know, that uh, the um, ports uh, were closed, uh, the, um, we had to uh, change uh, the routes for the ships with um, uh, our products, but still, uh, thanks to uh, China government, with uh, to thanks to uh, China authorities, we uh, could uh, supply the level of export. Uh, we could supply the level of uh, the amount of uh, the products uh, to China on the level no uh, less than uh, two thousand tons uh, uh, monthly. 接下来我来重点介绍一下俄罗斯向中国出口禽肉的一些特殊的这个情况，呃，主要是由于新冠肺炎疫情在今年的前两三个月，我们受到了很大的挑战。呃，大家都知道，俄罗斯向中国出口
从呃本本月呢，有几家俄罗斯企业开始通过铁路的方式向中国出口禽肉。呃，我我这个认为本周或者是下周早些时候，集装箱呢就将会到达重庆站。这个是对于俄罗斯和中国来说都非常重要的一个新的啊发展情况，因为我们这样就可以通过内陆直接向中国出口禽肉了。Yes,、uh, we make、uh, our first steps、uh, on this direction.、Uh, I mean, on the uh, railroad uh, logistics, but I hope that we will、uh, improve. This way, and we will、uh, improve the amount of、uh, meat exported to China by the railroads. 嗯，现在我们通过铁路运输呢，还只是试水。接下来，我希望这个通过铁路呃出口的禽肉量会不断的增加。Next slide, please. 下一张。Uh, next slide, please. 下一张。Uh, uh, I will、uh, make a short summary for my presentation, and、uh, I would like to say the following: that、uh, Russian poultry industry uh, has not been uh, negatively affected by the、uh, epidemic of、uh, COVID-19, as、uh, no company sees its、uh, operation disrupted. And the demand uh, reportedly uh, remains uh, stable. We uh, don't uh, see uh, the disruption of、uh, supply chain either within、uh, Russian Federation or、uh, regarding our exports. Thanks to、uh, Russian government, in collaboration with the、uh, Russian government, with.、Uh, Russian regulators,、uh, as well as federal uh, and uh, uh, regional,、uh, we were able uh, to um, I, uh, not to fix. We were uh, able uh, to save、uh, our supply chain and uh, not uh,、um, give uh, the. Oh,、uh, give me one minute, please. I、uh, for forgot uh, this uh, meaning in, in English. Uh, uh, with the assistance, with the collaboration of、uh, Russian regulators and、uh, Russian authorities, we were able to keep the、uh, biosecurity measures、uh, on our poultry farms and、uh, do not avoid the disruption of、uh, supply chain. So. This is right. 嗯，那么接下来总结一下，俄罗斯的这个呃家禽生产业呢，并没有受到新冠肺炎疫情的负面影响，也没有企业呃报告称他们的这个生产或者说业务中断，现在需求仍然保持稳定，供应链呢也没有中断，无论是说俄罗斯境内还是说我们在这个呃国际出口方面都没有中断。我们与俄罗斯政府以及俄罗斯联邦以及地区的监管机构合作。确保俄罗斯养殖场，呃，维持较好的生物安全措施，进而保证我们的供应链不受影响。Uh, of course, we consider the Chinese market、uh, not only one of the biggest、uh, market,、uh, but also the key market for Russian poultry products. And I hope that.、Uh, 能听见吗？ This collaboration with、uh, you know, with China in、uh, our industry. Uh, China market not only applies to other countries, but also to the United States. China market is also a very important market for Russian poultry products. We hope in the future to have more cooperation with China. Next slide, please. Next slide. 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 Yes.、Uh, thank you very much for your attention, and、uh, feel free to ask me your questions. I see that、uh, Olga Hunger、uh, has a question uh, to me. Uh, yeah. Let me find it. Let me find it. Yeah. Yes, Miss Hunger was asking you, as you mentioned about there's、uh, no GMA feeding in in Russia. Well. Uh, now Russia can、oh. along the uh, 
importing of the GMO soybean. So where this uh, uh, soybean be uh, used in poultry farm? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, divided uh, these uh, questions uh, uh, on two sides. Uh, first of all, it is uh, forbidden to use, uh, to plant and to grow GMO soya in Russia. But uh, on another hand, we have a special uh, legislation regarding the imports of uh, GMO soya. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Russian importers can import uh, mm -hmm. GMO soya, mm -hmm. which, uh, uh, which follows uh, very strict mm -hmm. requirements. Uh, for example, uh, mm -hmm. if you want to import GMO soya, you should uh, register the line of uh, this very GMO uh, soya. Mm -hmm. It takes uh, about mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. one year mm -hmm. and a half for the registration process. And uh, the positive result uh, can be only if this uh, GMO line uh, follows uh, all the uh, requirements and uh, all the strict standards of a uh, Russian regulator. Otherwise, it is, Im uh, it is impossible to import uh, this kind of soya. 嗯，这个问题我们分两方面回答。第一个呢，就是在俄罗斯境内是严禁种植转基因大豆的。第二个方面就是，呃，是允许进口转基因大豆的，但是也要遵守非常严格的程序，一定要在这个嗯监管部门
uh, exporting. Yeah, but good to hear from uh, from the surgery that uh, uh, you you still feel positive on the uh, importing of feeding additives from China to to Russia.呃，刚才俄罗斯呃向他提了一个问题，就是现在由于新冠肺炎疫情的影响呢，呃，很多俄罗斯农场都表示这个从中国进口饲料添加剂呃这个供应链方面出现了一些问题，呃，问这个发言
who uh, from uh, also from the Department of Agriculture of Thailand and uh, recommend uh, the very good speaker for us. 那么接下来呢，我们有请这个泰国农业部畜牧司的呃首席兽医师呃这个坎坎亚拉米士女士，她也是呃博士。呃，在此呢，也非常感谢这个泰国呃农业部的巡视员 Darius 博士给我们的呃这个热情的非常专业的推荐。So, uh, Dr. Kanyarat, uh, Sawadika, welcome. Yeah, good, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, it's an honor for me and Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperative and Thailand to be a part of your TR China webinar today. So, um, my name is Kanya Rat Samrat Vimon Rat. So, I'm working at the Department of Livestock Development at a vet veterinary inspector for almost nine years. So, this session, I'm going to talk about the poultry industry review of Thailand. So, next slide, please. 大家早上好，下午好，晚上好。我非常荣幸能够代表泰国农业与合作社部畜牧业司来参加，呃，这个呃本次环球禽业论坛。那我本人是一名啊兽、呃、医检查检疫员，呃，已经工作有九将近九年的时间了。接下来我会介绍一下泰国家禽业的一个情况。So this is my outline of my presentation. I'm gonna start with the World poultry industry, and after that, I'm going to focus on the Thai poultry industry. 呃，这个是我接下来做报告内容的一个呃呃一个这个概要。首先介绍一下全球的情况，接下来介绍泰国的。Yes. Um. So this slide shows that shows the trends of the meat demand from. Uh, 2005 to 2050, and is predicted by uh, FAO. This shows that uh, every type of meat, as well as eggs, will have higher demand in 2050. But if we focus on each type of meat, so we will see that you will see that poultry is the high has the highest demand in. Uh, among type of meats, and it increased more than two times comparing to 2005. So this means that poultry meat will be a main source of protein in the future. 这张幻灯片上，我们来看一下二零零五到二零五零年肉类需求的一个趋势。这是 FAO 粮农组织做出的一个预测。我们可以看到，所有的肉类需求都在上涨，呃，其中禽肉的需求是最高的，呃，从零五年到五零年，基本上需求会增加两倍多，呃，这也就意味着未来禽肉将会成为主要的蛋白质来源。下一张。Um, and this part is going to be the World poultry industry. 接下来讲一下全球家禽产业。So on the production side, the United States, as you everyone would know, is ranking the first of poultry meat producer, following with China and Brazil. So also there are some poultry, uh, there are some high poultry meat producer countries, uh, such as Russia. Turkey and India, and Thailand also in the world top ten countries for tree production as well. 嗯、呃，看，首先看一下生产方面。大家都知道，美国是全球第一大禽肉生产国，接下来呢是中国、巴西，呃，还有其他一些重要的禽肉生产国是俄罗斯、土耳其、印度，还有泰国。泰国也是排名前十的。Yes, and when we look at the import and export aspects, so uh, on the on the left chart, uh, I if I may call the the UK as a country in Europe, the European countries is the number one of importing 
uh, of importing poultry meat countries in the world and followed by Japan and China. Uh,我们来看一下前绕进出口的一个情况。首先,左边这张图是进口。呃,这里呢,我们把英国算作一个单独的国家。呃,欧盟呢,是全球第一大进口国,然后是日本,然后是中国。while on the exporting side, Brazil and uh, United States and also European Union are the top, top three importing country of the world. Following with the little uh, country, sorry, following with a, a little country, which is Thailand at the fourth ranking uh, of exporting uh, uh, country. 右边呢是出口，我们可以看到巴西、美国和欧盟是排名前三的出口国。呃，排在他们后面呢是一个小国泰国是第四名。And Thailand is one of the world's largest producer, food producer, and exporting countries. So poultry industry generates a great deal of income to Thailand for years. And Thai poultry serves the domestic market for 60%, and the rest we uh, export them. And this graph shows the history of Thai poultry industry very well. So before 2004, we export mainly fresh poultry meat. But when we got a big hit, by the avian influenza in 2004, uh, many countries banned Thai products. So, uh, as you can see from the charts, that the 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 level of the export amount has low lower than the 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 year before 2004. Uh,这张幻灯片上的图表呢,非常,呃,完美的展现了我们出口的一个发展史。零四年之前,泰国主要出口的是这个先禽肉。但是零四年我们受到禽肉感的严重打击,多个国家禁止从泰国进口禽
And with the collaboration and cooperation between government and public sectors to control the situation, uh, in 2007, Thailand declared that we are free from uh, the avian influenza. And it's been a while after the declaration for the importing countries to accept Thai, accept Thailand and lift the ban of importing raw product, uh, raw poultry meats. 那么之后呢，一些进口国又这个呃宣布再次接受来自泰国的呃这个鲜禽肉制品啊取消禁令。Yeah, next slide, please. And now, uh, um, I'm going to talk about the poultry production in Thailand. Uh, so let's start with chicken first on the left. Um, we have around 6,700 GAP broiler farms located over the country. And around 120 million heads of chickens are slaughtered per month. Uh, 每月的这个出栏量是1.2亿鱼. And we have uh, around 29 chicken slaughterhouses, which has the export standard. 有29家肉鸡屠宰场是满足出口标准的。so for duck, we have around 20, no, we have around 240 GAP meat type duck farms and around 3 million heads of duck uh, are sent to a slaughterhouse every month. And we have only three duck slaughterhouses with the export standard. Uh, 这个泰国全国有两百四十家GAP标准化肉鸭养殖场，每月出栏三百万鱼，然后呢只有三家满足出口标准的肉鸭屠宰场。Um, so now we move to the market. Um, previously before Thailand can access to China market, uh, our main markets are of raw pro. Raw products are Japan and EU. 接下来看一下市场情况。在泰国禽肉进入中国市场之前，我们的鲜禽肉主要流向日本和欧盟。Uh, but once we can export to China, China becomes the second place of the importing countries, following uh, Japan and. And then EU become the third importing country of Thailand. Uh, but after我们获准进入中国市场之后呢，中国就成为了泰国禽肉的第二大进口国，仅次于日本，而欧盟就滑到了第三位。Next uh, slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, export around 52% to Japan and around 37% to EU. And we have uh, no uh, market in China for the cook, uh, cook product, cook protein product. Uh, 出口方面, uh, 呃这个是出口到日本市场的 37%是到欧盟 中国呢现在并没有进口泰国的熟制禽肉 Next slide please 下张 um, So as in many shots previously So you will see that Thai poultry industry has gradually grown And comparing to 
2016, uh, Thailand exported uh, around 48% higher in raw poultry meat products and around 18% higher in cooked poultry meat products. 再看一下泰国禽肉的一个发展趋势，呃，现在和一六年相比呢，呃，鲜禽肉出口量增加了百分之四十八，熟制禽肉出口增加了百分之十八。It's like this. Uh, so let's go to the uh the the control of the government. So the DLD, which is from the Department of Livestock Development, is the main organization which has responsibility responsibility on uh, animal health. And for example, we work on the uh, avian influenza outbreak, and yet uh, we still have control measures and surveillance program on the, this disease. Uh, DRD also take care of the animal product and this related to uh, food safety, public health, and as well as the animal welfare. So for the export products, DRD supervise food business operators to comply with foreign uh, regulation as well. Uh管管制控制措施,呃这里的DLD呢指的就是泰国农业与合作社部的畜牧业司,呃畜牧业司呢是主要的一个负责机构,呃负责呃这个动物卫生方面的一些事务,比如说嗯禽流感疫情,
uh, vet drugs and at the farm. Uh, at the post harvest, we have uh, the control at slaughterhouses, processing plants, uh, and after that, when the products launch to the market, we also have to control uh, the product in the domestic market and also the export products.呃，台国对于载前载后和这个流向市场之后三个环节，呃，对产品所施加的这个管理控制措施。嗯，首先载前的环节呢，是在呃饲料厂还有这个兽药以及养殖厂的环节都有管理。那么载后呢，就是
So from then to now, China approved around 22 Thai establishment to export to China. And uh, China still considering to expand the duck meat to import to China as well. 嗯，这张幻灯片上就呃显示了中国对于泰国畜产品的信心。中国此前呃有呃超过十年的时间都是禁止从泰国进口这个呃禽肉制品的原因就是禽流感。那么从二零一七年开始，中国再次展现出了对泰国禽肉产品的呃这个兴趣。嗯，中国呢批准了一些泰国的企业向中国出口禽肉产品，并且现在仍然考虑呃要增加这个出口商的呃数目。So, uh, there is information shows that, uh, in 2019, uh, Thai export volume gain, uh, around. 250% after we export, we can export to China. 嗯，那么一九年呢，就是自从泰国可以进入中国，呃，泰国禽肉产品可以进入中国市场以来，我们的出口量增长了超过百分之两百五。Yeah, next slide, please. 下张。And these are some more confidence from the countries. Uh, so from EU, uh, Thailand has the, I mean, Thailand is the number one export, exporter of fresh poultry, fresh poultry meat to the EU and also the cooked product as well. And we also got a compliment on the food safety on site audit by the auditor from uh, DG Sangte. 嗯，这一张幻灯片来看一下其他国家对泰国禽肉产品的呃这个信心。首先是欧盟，泰国是欧盟呃的这这个鲜禽以及熟制禽肉的第一大出口国。我们也得到了来自这个啊、呃、欧盟食品安全司总司呃检疫检验检疫人员的这个表扬。Uh, for Singapore, uh, lately we just uh, received an offer for uh, pre-listing authority from uh, Singapore government and Singapore and also Singapore expand uh, the scope of import import uh, the shield uh, chicken to Singapore. 那我们可以看到，这个第二个呢是新加坡，呃，向泰国政府提供了准入许可，并且呢，呃，扩大从泰国进口呃冷鲜鸡肉产品的范围。And for Japan, um, uh, they just lift uh the ban for export fresh poultry product, and we also the number one exporter. Uh, of poultry products to Japan. 嗯，第三个是日本。日本这个解除了对于泰国鲜禽肉的出口禁令，并且呢，泰国也是日本第一大禽肉出口国。Uh, next slide, please. 下一张。And and these are also the example of the confidence uh from the countries uh like. South Korea, which uh, lift the ban of fresh poultry product as well, and Canada, they give us the authority for uh, pre-list the establishment, and as well as in uh, the South Africa, they provide us the authority for uh, pre-list pre-listing the establishment to the Thai government. 嗯，这张幻灯片上是继续介绍其他国家对泰国禽肉产品的信心。首先是韩国取消了鲜禽肉的出口禁令，然后呢，加拿大和呃呃呃呃 ，sorry， 呃、uh, ，the last country which country？ 呃、uh, ，South Africa。嗯
，呃，这个加拿大和南非呢，也都向泰国政府提供了准入许可。Next slide, please. 下一张。And for the Thai livestock outlook, um, so after African swine fever spread in the EU and China, uh, it's really affected the balance of food uh, of the protein source. Uh, people look for the other sauce and the poultry is a good is a good choice. So it should be a good sign for Thai poultry. Uh, I mean poultry for export. If uh, there was no COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, uh, and at the beginning of the situation when the government. In many countries, asked to shut down the public places, cities, or even country. Thai poultry had the effect on export quite a lot. How, however, now uh, many countries unlock the strict measures, then the stock can be released. 嗯，之前呢，非洲猪瘟疫情侵袭了欧盟和中国。呃，也这个，嗯，影响到了这个蛋白质来源的一个平衡情况。人们呢都在寻找其他的蛋白质来源。那这样这样一来，禽肉就成为一个非常好的选择。那如果没有新冠肺炎疫情的爆发呢，原本嗯、呃、这个情况对于泰国禽肉出口来说是一个非常好的迹象。在疫情开始的时候，多个国家的政府对于这个公共场所、城市，甚至是全国，呃，都下达了这种封锁的命令。呃，所以泰国的出口呢，泰国禽肉出口受到了严重打击。但是现在，各国家呃已经在陆续解禁了，我们也认为情况会改善。嗯、um, ，compare to the red meat。Chicken meat demand is expect is expected to be more flexible when、uh, facing the economic crisis. Therefore, Thailand would be would have a good opportunity uh, in the world market、uh, with the high standard product and trust wealthiness from、uh, countries. And we also expect for the new market. 呃，相对于红肉来讲呢，呃，人们预计禽肉在经济危机的时候会展现出更强的灵活性，所以泰国在全球市场，呃，是有非常大的这个发展潜力和机遇的，因为我们有着高标准的产品，并且得到了各国的信赖。当然，我们也期待不断不断去开拓新的市场。Um, and this is all of my presentation, and I hope you. Uh, we'll get some idea of Thai、uh, poultry industry more or less. Thank you. Uh, 以上就是报告的全部内容。希望大家多少增加了对泰国禽肉的了解。谢谢。Thank you, Doctor uh, Kanyarat. And uh, I think uh, um, your presentation on the Thai uh, poultry, especially with a、uh, cooked uh, poultry meat, And really bring us to the delicious memory about the Thai food. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and you.、Uh, is there any question from our, our audience? You you are、uh, invited to raise up your hand. And uh, actually, uh, I have a question,、uh, Dr. Kanyarat. And、uh, we、yes. know that Thailand is a very big、uh, feeding.、Uh, A company, a country, produce feed, but you also import the raw material for the feeding stuff.、Uh, how does the、uh, coronavirus impact、uh, on your feeding supply and exporting business?、Um, we do import the raw material from. Uh, other country, but we produce the feed by ourselves. So we and and our our government there,、uh, it has no strict measure to to control the the import and export, and 
and also in about and also the 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 transportation within the country so uh there there was i mean there is no uh problem for for the farmer and the producer or i mean entrepreneur to to get to have problem with this issue with the coronavirus I see that's really that's really um uh company you uh uh Uh,同其他国家进口原材料生产资料，但是这个生产环节呢，是在呃泰国国内的。那么呃，泰国政府对于进出口以及国内运输并没有施加严格的控制措施，所以农民生产者以及企业呃在新冠肺炎疫情
标准化和国际化程度呢，都高于其他的畜牧业产业了。那么，其生产的技术啊、生产设施设备啊，包括产品标准啊、管理啊，都是与国际接轨的。嗯、um, ，as with concentration, the white feather、uh, broiler industry uh, topped all animal production sectors. And speaking of、um, concentration, industrialization. <clears throat> uh, Large-scale operations, standardization, and internationalization. Uh, the white bro white feather broiler industry uh, is all higher than other uh, animal production sectors. And uh, uh, speaking of technologies, equipments, uh, product standards, and uh, management, uh, we have reached international standards.黄老师你能听见吗 我们之前看到以前呢，我们是以垂直一体化的，就是这种集中产业度比较高，占百分之三十。然后公司加集约化，就是这个公司加农户的这种契约模式呢，有百分之四十。然后这些散这些散户呢，有百分之三十。但是也
可以了，可以了，您请讲。可以了啊。对对对啊。那么有我们中国的家庭呢，是一个多样性的一个一个国家，这和国和别的国家呢是不太相同的。那么肉鸡这一块呢，白羽肉鸡还是占了一个主导的一个一个地位。我们一年呢，就是刚才说了五十五亿只鸡以上，大概产量在一千一百一千二百万吨的呃产品。康飞，喂，喂，您继续往下一页，那个黄黄老师，再往下一页，对，往翻页，高旭，嗯，呃，下一页是第五页吗？对对，就是屏幕上您看到的这个。哦，第五页啊、哦。那么中国的鸡肉的消费呢，是不断呈上升的趋势。那么现在白羽肉鸡的那个年消费呢，大概在每人每公每人每年大概在九公斤。那么鸡肉消费呢，可能在十四公斤左右。那么已经呃不断的改变了中国的那个消费结构，啊，主要是白羽肉鸡在拉动。可以听到翻译吗？可以，可以。Okay, uh, China's poultry sector is a bit different from other countries. Uh, it's very diversified. White feather broilers play a dominant role. Uh, each year, the slaughter numbers over 5.5 billion heads, and the production of final products uh, registers around 12 million metric tons. And in China, we see an increase in uh, chicken meat uh, consumption. Uh, and the consumption is around 14 kilograms per person per year. And uh, um, white, the consumption of white feather broiler amounts to nine kilograms per person per year. So we see a change of consumption structures and uh, white feather broilers contributed a lot. 呃，所以中国的那个这个人均消费啊，这个呃白羽肉其实占了九公斤左右，而低于世界的平均水平。那么，呃，在中国呢，作为第二大的消费肉类，啊，第一消费肉类是猪肉，那么第二呢就是鸡肉，啊，是白羽肉鸡属于第二大消费肉类。这个的趋势呢还在不断的上升，啊，这个。呃，我们未来有可能人均要这个涨的，呃，上升到白羽肉鸡可能要到二十公斤。嗯、um, ，the per capita consumption of white feather broilers is nine kilograms uh per year, uh, lower than the global average, uh, and uh, uh, chicken, uh, especially white feather, uh, uh, especially chicken from white feather broilers. Uh, ranks second among all meat sources uh, only after pork, uh, but it is increasing. And in the future, we expect the per capita consumption of white feather broilers to rise to 20 kilograms. Next. 呃呃，土地这个资源的限制，这个呢，就是在中国呢，因为我们有这个，虽然中国地大物博，但是有限耕地还是很少的，所以如何提高我们那个动物蛋白的那个生产，这个这个动物蛋白的生产呢，就是在这个土地粮食方面，是一个对我们中国是一个挑战，这是第一方面。<咳> Uh, next, I will talk about the six challenges facing China's white feather broiler industry. Uh, first, uh, uh, challenge comes from uh, limited uh, uh, land, food, and water. China is uh, China has a large territory, but the area of arable land is limited. Uh, so we still need to explore how to uh, increase. Uh, the production of animal protein within such a background, uh, against such a background. Uh, the second challenge is the environment challenge. Because China, 
这个氛氛围的无害化、资源化、综合利用是一个提出的一个考验。<咳> Uh, the second challenge comes from environmental protection. China has introduced uh, the strictest ever uh, law on environmental protection, and uh, uh, thus comes a test for uh, for non hazardous treatment of animal manures and utilization uh, of animal manures. Uh, the third challenge is. 疫病风险的挑战，这个主要养殖方式、生物安全体系如何建立？那么，在中国这个白玉肉鸡这方面呢，我觉得我们是在这个要加强这个呃生物安全体系的一个建设，是我们一个要转型升级这方，这是一个重大的考验，确保养殖健康的养殖。嗯。嗯、uh, ，The third challenge. Uh, is uh, risk from epidemics, animal epidemics, namely uh, feeding methods, approaches, and the uh, establishment of a biosecurity system. I think in China's white feather broiler industry, we need to um, enhance our biosecurity system. And this is uh, a precondition for the transformation of this industry. We need to do uh, we need to raise our birds in a healthy way. Yeah. 那么这里呢，主要是考虑到抗生素的规范使用。那么严格国家的法律法规，尤其是今年的七月一号开始，呃，中国政府已经明确禁止在饲料里面添添加那个抗呃预防用的抗生素，也就是 AGP。所以这对我们这个呃饲养土呃养殖场来说是一个考验。嗯、um, ，So challenge four comes from food safety, uh, namely the uh, standard use of antibiotics and strict compliance with national laws, starting from July the first, uh, the use of AGP. And other antibiotics will be forbidden uh, in feed. Uh, so this is a great challenge for your farms. Uh, the fourth 一些努力和改善。呃、uh, ，Challenge five， 呃、uh, ，animal welfare， 嗯、um, uh, ，as uh, international trade develops further， a lot of clients have put forward require requirements on animal welfare， and over the past five years， China has got its hands on animal welfare improvement。呃，最后一个呢，就是我们消费者的诉求不断的提高，呃，要要提要求我们所有的那个企业要加大研发，这个增加那个美味、营养、健康的更方便的食品，这个要求呢是越来越严，越来越高。On challenge six comes from consumers. Uh, the consumers have higher demands for the taste, so this. Uh, uh, requi requires the uh, uh, enterprises to have better R&D capacity to produce tasty, nutritional, healthy, and convenient food. Uh, next one. This China, this industry, for the future development, has from these two aspects. One is the slowing down, because the very beginning of the twenty-first century. 这个行业发展的非常快，这个都是两位数的增长。那么现在从这个高速增长呢，就转为中低速，那也就是转转化成一种高质量的发展阶段。嗯、uh, ，Next, let's have a look at future development trends for this industry. Uh, first, the slower growth rate. During the first twenty years uh, of this industry, uh, we witnessed double-digit growth, but now it has come down to um, 
um, growth rate uh, uh, at a medium or low level, uh, but with more focus on quality. And we need to uh, further improve our infrastructures and equipments to have higher efficiency uh, and to have better uh, indicator performances. Uh uh, another trend is uh, transformation and upgrading. Uh, we expect a, a further consolidation within this sector uh, and uh, uh, as a result, modernization uh, and the, uh, the degree of concentration will also rise as a result. Uh, earlier, I mentioned that the uh, concentration status uh, in this industry now is uh, around 70%. And in the future, uh, I think there will be four to five big players with a uh, slaughter capacity of more than 500 million heads. <laughs> Uh, uh, the fourth trend um, uh, is attributable to uh, some other development factors. For example, the development of the catering industry uh, contributes to uh, the development of white feather broiler industry and also upgrades in consumer demand, uh, changes in consumption structures, uh, the growth of Chinese and Western style fast food, and the, um, the special food delivery services in China are all driving the development of this industry. And of course, urbanization is not to be neglected. Amira. Okay. I, um, thank you very much for Ms. Huang for the China uh, briefing briefing on the uh, for the briefing on the Chinese broader system. Actually, due to the due to uh, due to, uh, with, uh, as we know that uh, poultry meat consumption in China is continually growing and uh, there is uh, uh, due to the very high price of the pork uh, uh, meat in the market and uh, which is almost uh, double and even triple in some region of the uh, price like uh, two years before and more and more consumer tend to uh, consumption of, of, on the poultry meat and uh, we believe that uh, China poultry per capita nine or ten uh, kilogram 
uh, uh, consumer, uh, perhaps there will continue to uh, increase in a few years, especially uh, even after we, we believe that even after ASF, the sun, uh, Africa sun favor on the pig uh, industry, the consumer's habit won't be won't be changed back for uh, backward uh, to the uh, old style like 66 uh, percent of Chinese diet uh, meat uh, consumption was on um, pork, and uh, we have uh, a, bro a forecaster from the Chinese economist and uh, experts that uh, poultry will continuously increasing uh, to even increasing 10 percent in China in Chinese con consumption and even also with the dark. The, so the poultry will be uh, a new uh, rising industry for China. And uh, we believe that, of course, uh, now China facing a very challenging time with uh, new regulation on the feed. So we see that uh, this sector become more and more dynamic for challenges. And uh, uh, we will see in future how globally, of course, uh, the meat uh, uh, exporting to China was really uh, flooding in every every week from the from the sow and uh, also from the small uh, from the chicks. And uh, I think China was was on a discussion on the meat self sufficient on the way to that. Uh, but uh, we do see the huge potential for the treat and also cooperation with the technical cooperation with the world uh, for the uh, poultry production for biosecurity and for international cooperation. So thank you very much, every, uh, everyone, for today's contribution. And uh, uh, we continue to uh, uh, like to invite yeah. you for the discussion. Yeah. Well, thank you. And, uh, mm. 好，嗯，那么中国的肉类消费呢，还会不断的增长。之前呃，因为猪肉的价格攀升比较快，达到了两年前水平的两倍，甚至是三倍。所以很多消费者呢，转向了禽肉。我们认为这个中国呃人均
，呃，这个商品饲料中，呃，应用还是比较少见的。你能让大家都进来吗？刚才 ，Yeah， 呃、uh, ，Any more question from、uh, from Thailand？ 还有没有有泰国的问题吗？嗯、uh, ，Yeah， we see Leo Su， and anyone， 呃、uh, ，maybe if you are convenient， you are warmly welcome to。To open open the your video, and、uh, we can see who you are, and maybe this gives some uh, uh, exciting or uh, uh, to our speaker to have more discussion. 嗯、呃，请大家如果方便的话，可以打开摄像头，这样我们可以进行更热烈的讨论，也可以看到彼此。<笑> Saskia, do you have any question? Or Mr. Mrs. Oliver Müller from Germany, I think. Yeah. Get her. Get. I mean, you can open your uh your speaker. Get her back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, also you're welcome to introduce yourself as well. 大家也可以先进行自我介绍。嗯，打开这个。把静音键要关掉。So I don't have a question right now. Thank you very much for this well organized webinar. Thank you very much to all of the speakers and、um, hi. <laughs> so I don't have a question right now. Okay. Uh, um, uh, which part is most your interested uh, uh, region and your interested uh, content today? You can give us some feedback for next time to get、uh, for improvement because we will continue to have this webinar. Any suggestion from you? So for me,、uh, I'm from Germany, and、um, um, I'm very interested, or I was very interested in the、um, um, in the presentations of、uh, Ronald and Winter. And、uh, the other German colleagues. So this, but I was also interested in the other ones because I'm also、um, working a little bit,、um, yeah, all over the, over the world. And、um, so it was a very interesting webinar. Thank you for that. It was. I think、Thank、it、you. was a bit longer. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, much longer than we expected. I think <laughs> after translation, it is. Yeah, yeah,、no. yeah. Me, Yeah, Dr. Darius, may we kindly ask you? And、uh, I think Thailand was always interesting for for Chinese and also for、uh, for European. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.、Mm, hi, everybody. Ah,、uh, Lily. Ah,、uh, Zakia, and I don't know、uh, where is the um my friends. Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. I think that、uh, I appreciate uh this webinar, and I hope that uh next time, uh, we will arrange again, and uh every papers uh uh every presentation uh are uh very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Darius. I、uh, we hope that uh. Uh, we can.、Uh, the webinar will be with a special、uh, channel for the special time. We hope future we can go to Thailand as soon as possible <laughs> to yeah, meet you、sure. face、Why、to face. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, yeah. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. I think、uh, it was very good. I really thank you for the second webinar, and、uh, it, it's already our second time for the poetry. And then the first time we made on the pig, uh, to uh, about ten days ago, and as Mr. Koch mentioned, we were in another ten days. We're gonna have the a dairy related webinar, and afterwards、uh, we're gonna go to more detail because for the first beginning we 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 focus on the、uh, each set、uh, each spaces, and the first on and we will continue to the specific topic. So you are warmly welcome to、uh, give us、uh, and all of you here today to give us、uh, your suggestion. 
what do you want to uh, exchange on the platform. Uh, although now we cannot travel and uh, we cannot meet face to face, but we hope that uh, with this kind of uh, methods, we still can exchange information and we feel this is very, um, at least at this moment, is a very effective. And so you are welcome to give us your interest in topic so that we can continue to give very specific topic on the webinar and to get our, um, all of you to feel informative. So then uh, for con to continue our uh, global uh, information transfer. I think today we, uh, it's a pity that we don't have a speaker from America because it's really because the time constraint at the midnight, we can not get them. And, uh, but we hope that uh, with, an, with a good uh, timing next time, we can really have global speakers and to exchange information. We hope for URT and URT China, we can continuously provide all of you kind of uh, meeting. Uh, this virtual meeting online can is really happy to see many old friends on, on the uh, screen. And uh, actually, it's already very late of you. I see some of you on lunchtime and some of after dinner time. But uh, you are all of you are highly appreciated for the contribution and uh, stay at the webinar until end of the event. And uh, we really appreciate. So, any of you would like to see something? Please welcome and give any suggestion to us because I really do. I do see some colleague of mine from uh, Russia, uh, from Ukraine, and um, and also we do have many countries participants here. Yeah, I can see people are still. Uh, we we are human being. We still love to to uh, exchange. We talk to people. Yeah. So this is really appreciate of all of you yes saskia do you have any uh things to to talk from your side because you work hard on it as well um sorry i have to to unmute me first no actually again lily thank you very much for this great organization and the really good moderation and thank you to everybody who stayed like oh god like four and a half hours or something like this in our <laughs> webinar um it's again more a chinese timing than a european timing but um, I found it again very, very interesting as well for me. So I'm more from the organizational part. So I'm not a farmer and I'm, I have no agrarian or agriculture background, but I learned as well a lot. And um, I always laugh as well to listen to presentations from other countries to see um, as well how they cope with current challenges and what's um, going on there in the industry. So thank you very much to everyone. And yeah, I hope to see you soon. And maybe I really keep fingers crossed that we all can meet again in Chengdu in September. Um, yeah. And that, uh, yeah, visas will be possible till then. Yeah, uh, I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, as a human being, you see, we, uh, we all, we are, I think we're more powerful to uh, uh, get uh, find a solution when we're facing every challenge so you see we still get a, a kind of solution to meet and to do any business as a russian as our russian speaker was mentioned uh, he, when he got a problem with uh, to export meat to china by uh, by normal way and they use to transport to other country and now even to use a railway with many long time and uh, i think people do get uh, we are we are human beings we are all the we're one day we will overcome the challenging and uh, even become a better, a better word, maybe even safe, safe, more safety food, more uh, safe environment. I think this is really good. Yeah, I, I saw my colleague on the Honga was online. On, yeah, Ms. Honga, how are you? I think Olga left already. I can't see her anymore. I, I see her. Yeah, you can open your speaker. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. Yes, it's a great event. I think it is very important to change the experience in an international way. Uh, so we have uh, we had speakers from different countries, from China, from Germany, from Russia, from Thailand, and uh, in these special times, it is very very important to be um, informed about the situations in different countries. And I am very happy to be a part of this event and uh, to get so, uh, 
so a lot of information and thank you very much for organizing thank you very, mu very much to all speakers and thank you very much to the translator it was very great translation in english and um very great moderation from you uh Lily. thank you Thank you. Uh, that, uh, I think we actually introduced uh, Olga Hong. Uh, people should know that uh, she is a DLG expert on Russian business. Yeah. And uh, I think, yeah, I think so. He, he, she, has, uh, she has good contact with all the Russian from government, from farm and uh, uh, companies. I think he's like uh, our, yeah, uh, Russian brain. Uh, in DRG, right? I think it is. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I have a bit more countries um, uh, to take care of it. I'm responsible for Eastern Europe. There are about 18 countries, but Russia, of course, it is uh, one of the main countries that I take care of it. <laughs> yeah, you. yeah. Thank you very much. We we see we have a we still have our Chinese guest uh, Leon Sun. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Sun. Hello, Mr. Liu Sun. Yes, welcome. Uh, yes, can you hello, yeah. hello, hello. Yes. hello, nice to meet you. I think uh, I think you're from a Netherlands company, right? Am I sorry. right? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, can you introduce yourself and thank yeah, you a lot to stay with us for a long time. Okay, okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for gathering us to, uh, together. So uh, always, I, I think it, it will be a great chance to have all the guys from the different regions and uh, uh, from the different uh, industry and uh, uh, to hear some voice, I, I think it will always uh, a good chance for us. and. And for me, for us, uh, actually, we are a farm lighting uh, manufacturer, so it will be very important for us to learn something, and especially from the end user, from the farmers, uh, from the farmer side, and to to know and to have uh, a better pictures uh, uh, from the very beginning and the whole process, and uh, to see so what we can do and help the farmers and uh, using the uh, latest uh, lighting technology to help them and. Uh, but uh, uh, this uh, meeting uh, is my first time, so I, I don't have too much question, but uh, it will be great and uh, I'm very happy to be here and then I hope that I can share something uh, by my next meeting. Thank you all. Good to see you all. Uh, Thank you. Uh, which company uh, and which country are you from? That's right, I'm from China. I'm from China. <laughs> oh yeah, because I see. I see which company I see from the map is China, but I was not sure. <laughs> oh, you, you mean the company? Yeah, yeah. actually, I'm from uh, Artible Lighting. Artible Lighting. Actually, now we have the uh, we we got involved in the farm lighting uh, a business uh, since uh, 2013, and uh, we located in Shenzhen, the south part of China. So, and actually, we have our dealer distribution channels in uh, France, and uh, we have a. a, a partners in France. So as we, we have some uh, connection in your country and so uh, we, we, we basically do the expo uh, business and uh, we, we are a manufacturer located in Shenzhen, south part of China. Artipo, Artipo, A-R-T-I-P-R-O. So uh, maybe next time I can, uh, I can share more about us and about what, what we can uh, do. But uh, I, I think uh, always a great time to uh, meet all the people here and then uh, we, we are doing the different type of the business and doing the different type of the uh, border solution and, and I saw uh, so many experts here so uh, always I think it was a great experience for us to learn something. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, does, uh, does the, uh, the corona affecting on your exporting business and yeah, how course. much it was affected? And uh, uh, to be honest, it affects a lot uh, because uh, it's not only uh, from our side, but because we have the partners in, uh, in the market side, in, uh, for example, in the Europe countries, so uh, due to the lockdown and they cannot get in touch with their customers, so we have a lot of projects pending, so that effect a lot. But uh, by the end of the day, I, I think that we, we spend a lot of time during this period uh, to uh, get some uh, product uh, research and uh, development. So 
maybe uh, the thing uh, get better, the situation get better, we can provide more and uh, the better solution to support. So I, I think the it's, uh, only thing we can do is wait and pray and then uh, to make the things better and get something improved. So when the situation get better, so we can uh, be ready uh, in a better situation. I mean, yes. Yeah, and this is also what we experienced from China because uh, I had a meeting with uh, with some company, and uh, it was for the pandemic. It's really give challenging for many company, and uh, they reduce the salary, close the business. But uh, I also do hear from uh, quite many companies, especially from feeding company, was talking about uh, even during February, March, and uh, April and their sales volume reached a new high and a historical high and uh, with uh, due to the good service and uh, due, due to the good standard uh, so some some company um, will disappear especially in feeding and the farming sector but uh, though there are some high standard uh, and uh, frontier company are getting better and a better business and uh, this is a situation in China now because all know that China, uh, more or less, we, we became normal for domestic. But uh, as long as the international market is not becoming bad, is not becoming normal, uh, I think uh, we also suffered a lot in China and with uh, lockdown and it was closed off many uh, farming company. But, uh, yeah, and also, as I said, we do have some exporting oriented company turn back to domestic market. Um, but uh, there's, there's also good company, they, they get more and more clients because uh, they really provide uh, a support during clients, the difficulty time, it's especially to transport the feeding staff or, uh, when the transportation was not very smooth. They find a lot of solution to, to deliver goods to the supply, the uh, supply chain management. And some companies do have better business. So we see, um, we really um, expect in the near future, the industry is changing. And uh, so it is, uh, we're all looking for the new future. Yeah, I think so. Yes, yes, sure. Yeah. Mm. Right, Mr. Dr. Guna, what do you think? Also, I think a veterinarian in China really will uh, refer to the German veterinarian system. This is a, they're powerful and, uh, and a good system, right, Dr. Guna? Thanks for compliments, but I think you have a lot of specialists too. I met some of you uh, inspecting our slaughter plant uh, two years ago. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, making business with uh, Chinese companies and uh, the German poultry industry is very much interested in getting the certificate from the Chinese state for uh, an agreement to uh, import and to export poultry meat. Actually, I have a question I forgot to ask you mm, uh, because I know you are experts on the Turkey. Um, in China, and I think even in Asia, we don't have much production on Turkey. Mm, but the same, but, but we in, in, importing is increasing. And uh, I think that's also the German, like Heidemark was interested in importing Turkey to China. And, uh, but I, I'm a bit uh, um, cu uh, curious that why China don't have such much turkey farm. Is any uh, special or any secret or any special technique to, to, raise, to raise turkey compared to the uh, chicken? What shall I say? Definitely, a, a turkey is not a big chicken. This is for sure. And everybody who <laughs> thinks that, that the turkey business is as uh, easy or as simple as a broiler business, he will fail in, in, in his approach. There are some secrets, yes, but it's no, well, it's no, not really so secret that, that the Chinese couldn't do it as well. I think it's more or less um, habits, yeah. Um, Turkey was not uh, a big uh, industry in the 60s here in Germany, but it developed over time. And uh, I think this is possible uh, for the Turkey industry in China as well. 
it's different with regard to its uh, final products. You have a lot of white meat. Yeah, and uh, mm, as far mm. as I know, Chinese people are more interested in uh, the little things which uh, are not so favorable here for the Germans, like wing tips and uh, uh, wings, for, for, for instance. But I think it's just a question of uh, raising awareness that they are turkeys as well and uh, trying to uh, establish new habits in your country and uh, that would be great. I mean, I, I found some, some information in the internet about turkey business in China, yeah, but compared to the chicken business and to the duck business, it's, it's really small still, yes. Yeah, but I do know that many uh, chicken import in China, they are, are really uh, interesting to get business with German turkey uh, exporter. Um, because of the, as you see, the Thailand almost increased three times of the poultry exporting to China. And actually, uh, we do believe this number will continue to grow. And uh, because especially the young generation, they are turning to consume more chicken. Mm -hmm. From their generation, the chicken meat is more easy to cook. And uh, the, the and uh, now and also with a good, a very uh, cheap price and good protein. And uh, as we said, uh, now we only have nine kilograms, but the young generation will totally be happy about the the chicken meat can be cooked very easy and to be delicious and with a very easy cooking style. I think uh, that's why I was thinking maybe turkey is also interesting because this is a message I heard from the importer. They are really looking for the China to open the gate to, to Germany about to Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully soon, yes. Yeah, yeah. Very good. And uh, is any anyone would like to uh, join the discussion? We still see we have uh, uh, many people still here from different country, like uh, 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 our speak our participants from India and uh, Mr. Mr. Bremen if Mr. Bremen is still there we can see your face and uh, yeah okay uh, if no more uh, thing I think Saskia shall we shall we conclude today Shall we conclude today? I think, uh, thank you very much for all of you for staying with us. So, Ms. Dr. Guna, I hope to see you next time in, in China. As you said, you, have, you haven't been to China for 20 years, so you should yes. come next time. <laughs> yeah. And we definitely will get the Chinese veterinarian to uh, have, uh, uh, have the uh, exchange with you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. I'll, I'll work hard. I will work hard on it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when Mr. Heidemark was in, because I met uh, Mr. Heidemark, I think uh, about half a year before in China. And uh, yeah, I hope, hope to see you as well next time when he comes. Okay. Hope to see you too. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. Thanks for yeah, all Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hong guys. And thank you for your, intro, for your uh, recommendation of. Uh, uh, of the Russian speaker all the time to us, and uh, and also I hope the uh, uh, Argos. We we also have Chinese experts went to Argos, uh, but I think uh, we will hope our business come to normal very soon. I see you, huh? <laughs> and Argos will take place in the end of January, from 27 to 29th. Okay, hopefully that time everything should be okay globally. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. Are in, we are in the preparation. Hopefully, yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Darius, for, for your very kind every time. And it was very short to make such professional because you are really professional. And yeah. I think for DRG, we are very happy to, 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 to be connected with you as a, as a kind of a DRG key networking in Thailand. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 So have a good day, all of you. Have a good day. Thank you for joining us. Thank okay. you very much. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. 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 Have, have a good day. Have a good day.
Have a good day. Choose, choose that. ขอบคุณค่ะ Bye 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 bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.